And I am calling a meeting to order at 6 p.m. And the first item of business is to approve the minutes of April 17th. Um, Cindy, um, where you say following corrections, cross off Robert Klinger absent. It, it says of. Okay. Okay. I can it, fix that. Yeah. And um, I also uh, discussed with Cindy prior to the meeting that to put some sort of uh, um something at the beginning of that after further discussion sentence to make it make sense because that too is a correction from the March minutes and she has agreed to do that. Um, so if you all look at that line after further discussion, Cindy, what are you putting in place there? Just so everybody knows. So after further discussion in regards to the Garibanta emergency evacuation lift, the trustees decided not to, to pursue the purchase of the device due to the cost. Okay, that, that works for me, if that's okay with all of you. Are there any other uh, errors, omissions, corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Motion to accept. Is there a second? I will second. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. If not, we'll proceed to a vote. Fred? Yes. George? Yes. Bob? Yes. Deborah? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, and now we're on to the financial report, which I don't think we have an updated one at this point, um, but Cindy, you did, uh, can you just run those figures that you sent me in the email today? Sure, Thank so as, um, this is based on as of May 1st, which is last Wednesday when the um, last warrant and timesheets went in, we have, sp um, our total budget was 8,500, and five dollars eighty five eighty five dollars eighty five thousand five hundred five dollars we have spent sixty seven thousand six hundred and eighty eight dollars and twenty two cents with a remaining balance of seventeen thousand eight hundred sixteen dollars and seventy eight cents which will get us through to the end of June we still have May and June's Comcast May and June's Verizon May and June's Eversource salaries, collection development, and some maintenance bills came through today that will go in on the next bill schedule. So most likely we will have some left over, but we don't know yet how much. Okay. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions that we can somehow get answered if we need to? We're on track to, to be okay with, we want to get as close to zero as we can. Um, Okay, and yes. uh, and if there's, uh, I know we had, um, well, you're probably going to go over all the the maintenance um, bills that you got when you do your report, right? Right. Okay. Uh, is there any other discussion about financials? Real okay. quick. Yep. Go ahead, Bob. Real quick, I will work to get. It just didn't work out for me to get together with Jim, um, given other circumstances that arose. So I will get together with him as soon as I can. Um, and get the the financials up to date, um, let, or at least get his version of the financials up to date. I don't want to say your financials weren't aren't up to date, Cindy. I think I think that's what we need right now. Um, and then what I will do, if it's okay with everybody, I will just email those out like Jim used to. I'll get May up to date with him as soon as I can. I just don't know when that's going to happen. And I'll email I'll email the that package of reports out. Okay. It, it might be a, a little while. Um, there's some more health issues that Jim's dealing with. Yes. Okay. Um, director's report. Okay. So a few things have come up since I sent out my report. AJ came this morning and cleaned our carpet. So we will be getting a bill for that. That will come out of maintenance. Andrea and her crew, I thought they had mulched when they had first come, but they did not. So Andrea and her crew came back yesterday and mulched. And I did receive an invoice from her for $480 for the spring cleanup. That will come out of maintenance next week when I submit our next bill schedule. And I also received a $175 bill from Curious Oil from when Chet came in last week and did his inspection of everything. And that will come out of maintenance as well. Bob, do you want to talk at all about that inspection while we're on it? Sure. 
Um, I met, I went down and met with Chet and talked to him because I think we all have concerns as soon as you open up the door, door to the boiler room. Um, concerns abound. <laughs> it's a little frightening to open that door, even for somebody who understands most of what takes place in that room. Um, the boiler dates back to 1986. Chet did not understand why I had concerns about the boiler which I thought was an excellent response given the fiscal involvement of installing a new boiler. When I asked him, when I assured him that this had nothing to do with his performance in maintaining it, it was more a concern of everything has a finite lifespan. How long does he think it has? What, what are we facing? Um, he felt very comfortable being able to maintain this for a long time. And he is, I would say, middle-aged. Um, so I think we will have somebody of his skill set or him um, for <laughs> many. Pardon? Oh, no, sorry. I was just coughing. Oh, excuse me. So I think we'll, I, I just don't want to misspeak. I want to, I, this is recorded. Um, I'm trying to be appropriate. Uh, Chet was fantastic. Um I think Chet and Kiris will be able to help us. I am going to schedule a call with um, the, I forget the person's name at Kiris, the owner, and discuss Bob, Bob discuss Kyrus. lifetime cycles of these machines and what we should anticipate or is are there better solutions? And this goes to you, Fred. Can we, at some point, if we can limp this thing along or not even limp, according to Chet, it's running fine. Yeah. Um, can we can we keep this thing going for another five, seven, ten years, and then redo everything? New mini splits, new. Those are the types of conversations I want to have with Kiris uh, about yeah. overall. Yeah, yeah, I, I can comment some on that briefly, and and I think it's important that Sylvia is here to hear, and she may want to contribute. Uh, we're, I think that we're the town, I can say to say, is still pursuing a green communities grant to do an energy audit, in energy analysis, whatever you want to call it, of the building, looking at the mini splits and, and uh, the oil for oil furnace. Uh, yes, they, they will work. They will continue to work for years if we want to pay the maintenance and, and upkeep costs of it. Just like an old car is 10 years old, you can do a tune up. And it runs great, but it's not the most efficient. And I think that's what we need to look at is to get an energy okay. audit of okay. what the heating and air conditioning should be for the building. And I go back again numerous times as an example is what the town hall has. We have mini splits. That's it, period. Regardless of the temperature, the low temperature, they work. They're the newest version the latest, the greatest thing that they work. I go talk to uh, Neil Abram, Abramson, Abraham, uh, who is the caretaker to town hall. He will tell you how they work, whether there's problems with it, cold weather or not. Okay. I think that, that is the thing that we need to consider yep. in the future. And I think Sylvie is, is on track to propose something for green communities. We're I'll going to speak in a minute. So. Well, Fred, Fred, can I just excuse me it. for a second? Um, we're going to have uh, Sylvie. I'm going to move up uh, on uh, uh, old business, but let's finish the director's report and then we'll talk directly about these things. We'll hear from Sylvie first and we'll be able to talk about them. Okay. okay. I'd like to move back to Cindy and her report. Um, the only other thing I have is I have been trying to get back in touch with Jack at Well Design. Um, and he hasn't responded to me yet. I've sent him two emails and two phone calls, uh, except for the original estimate that he gave us for the two wireless pull stations and to um, connect them to the the okay. box. Um, did you have a chance to talk to JP again about whether that's okay with him? He would prefer they be surface mounted wired. But Jack is saying that considering the building and the that wireless would be the better way to go. So that that's where I'm stuck is okay. trying to get I, the information from Jack of okay, well, if we did the hardwired 
surface mounted hardware, what are we looking at for an estimate? I, I have some information to share on that. Do you want to talk about it now or later on? Uh, let's talk about it in old business with the fire safety. Yeah. Updates. Okay, Cindy, anything else? That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay, are there? Uh, I asked Cindy to put kind of a calendar on the um, on her. Oh report. yes, did everyone see my calendar? Yes, it's very and I also helpful. included funding sources, just so we're everyone sort of aware of where the funds are coming from. And there's three events that are not on there because I'm still working with the presenters on finalizing dates and times. Okay, are you doing anything in particular for Juneteenth? We're closed that day. I could put out a of course it's a I, we have Sorry. a display of Juneteenth books on um, the history of Juneteenth that we're certainly going to put those out on display. Okay. Um, maybe I can get in touch with the history teacher. I'm drawing a blank right now on his name. Tim Guy. Tim Guy. Tim to see if he'd like to come and do something sure. for history. I'll bet he would. Okay, I'll get I'm gonna put that on my follow-up list. Okay. All right. Any questions for Cindy in terms of her report? Just a comment that it's very helpful to have those upcoming events. It's a great idea. Oh, a, thank uh, you. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to, if with your uh, permission, I'd like to move to other first and have Sylvie, so she doesn't have to sit through our entire meeting, have Sylvie talk with us. Good evening, Sylvie. Thanks for coming. Hi, good evening. Um, thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, I did have an opportunity um, to talk with Cindy and um, Fred today, which was great. Um, and um, I wanted to thank you all for your patience. Uh, this has been pretty busy these past few months, and I know it's been a while since I talked with you. Um, but I did want to say that um, uh, I uh, got a, a grant submitted, um, an application submitted for the um, uh, MVP grant, which hopefully we'll be able to work with you on the pollinator habitat in the back of the library if that comes through. So I'm excited about that. Um, and we'll, of course, let you know how that turns out. Um, but yeah, so um, I understand, um, and as we talked about before, that um, as it is now, the library, um, the mini splits are, are being well maintained and they are fully functional um, and that the library is very well insulated. Um, and uh, that you have the mini splits and the um, furnace. Um, so, but that you are considering, um, you know, what a sort of um, whole system might look like um, moving away from that furnace at some point, and that the energy audit would be um, useful information in figuring out your best option um, if and when the time comes that you need to replace that boiler, which, you know, depending on how many years it might be, that'll be a discussion to decide. Um, but having an energy audit will give you that much more information. Um, so one thing that I have learned um, is that green communities, um, unfortunately, is not prioritizing projects for um, this type of study, at least in this round. Um, so that just means that I'll have to find another um, grant program that might be um, uh, targeted you know, for this particular type of project. Um, and I'm sure that there are many, um, but I just need to uh, start cultivating a list and um, figure out the best fit for us. Um, and I think that my next step also is to reach out to the UMass Energy Extension, who helped us with the um, building envelope for the elementary school, um, and to get some information from them if they, you know, might, might be a project that they would be interested in working on. And if not, perhaps they could point me in another direction. Um, but so this is something that it may take some time yet, but I um, will be working for you to figure out how we can get the energy audit um, uh, completed. And then, you know, when the time comes, we can also look for funding for the actual replacement of mini splits, if that's the way that you decide to go, because they have the ability to potentially do the whole building, um, you know, the functions for the whole building. So um, that's kind of where things stand with that. And if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to stay on. I have a quick question, and that is, um, why why is the green community? What is it about this project that the green communities is not prioritizing? Is it um, a, they, they just have a list of um, so, for example, um, uh, energy audits for buildings uh, is one um, type of project that they're not funding in this round. They're not funding additional um, 
solar arrays in this round there uh, and I I couldn't tell you their reasoning um on any of that but they do have a uh, selection of projects that that are just not going to be funded this time around and I don't know also if you know those will come back into focus in a later round I couldn't really say but um Green communities, unfortunately, just won't be available for this particular project at this time. Okay, Doug. So that's that's for the round that's coming up this fall. When would be the next opportunity after that? So, um, that would be in the springtime of um <laughs> five. But um, and I can ask our contact if they think that um they might be um, funding um, projects of this nature at that time, but I suspect that they'll tell me that they won't really know until um, until closer to when the new round opens up and it's not necessarily information that they would have, but if um, I can certainly ask the question. Okay. Any other questions for Sylvie? Well, thank you for working hard for us. I appreciate it. I know everyone appreciates that. And let us know when you've got some good or bad news. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay. And we're back up to improvement projects. Um, chimney work was listed first. Bobby, any, any update there? June 17th, Monday morning, 730, 7, 7.30, Rich Cooper, the Mason, is going to show up. Um, at least that's the current schedule. Uh, they will reach out to me as we get closer, um, and we will go from there. Okay. Any questions about that? That's one of the things that we've got money to pay for, so we need to get that done. All right. Now, fire safety upgrades and pull box installations. Cindy, the fire extinguishers are installed? Yes, all except for one. Um, I believe JP was waiting for one of the trustees to be available to go in and help him um, install it. And I'm not sure if that was going in the boiler room or near the boiler room, but there's one. There are now two upstairs, one over in the Adele Sachs room, one when you first walk in um, on the lift wall, and then two, um, and then one downstairs in the community room. So there'll be four? When it's all done? There'll be four when it's all done. Five okay. if you count the little kitchen one. Okay. Okay. Any questions about that? All right. So then the pull box installation. I get a, I yeah, get I'm sorry, Bob. Um, was there anybody in particular, Cindy, that he was looking for? Or should I? I'm going to be at Friday's morning thing. Should I just that talk got, to them? That actually got canceled on Friday morning. Oh. It's being rescheduled, but yeah. I believe he is waiting for you, Bob. Okay, then I will reach out to him. Thanks, Bob. Okay. That. Okay. Um. So, I guess that's that's that. Yes. Okay. We do have some things in the pipeline, um, that the finance committee still hasn't finished its decisions on. I'll let you know as soon as they do, in terms of of an alternate. Um, means of funding things that we were rejected for. Um, so uh, that should show up and town meeting may indeed uh, have some um, issues for us to vote and get our friends to vote with us on. Okay. Um, strategic plan upgrade. Go back to the pull boxes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've had some discussions with, with Mark and uh Drusieri on, on the pull boxes, and I, I, I guess I'm not sure the trustees know which way to go. Uh, we hear from JP that our fire chief said all you need is one by the front door, and I think in our last meeting we talked about how it would be, I guess, convenient maybe or useful to, put, to have one in a Duda room somewhere in the basement, and there was only I think George spoke up and said, yes, it would be useful. And, and I kind of said it was, but we never decided, do we want two locations? Do we want the one in a Duda room because that makes a difference in the cost? And what I've also heard is if we just want one by the front door, that can very easily be hardwired because it's what, five feet away from the main control box. And hardwire is the way to go because you don't have to worry about maintaining the batteries of the remote. 
of a remote box. And I don't know if there's special batteries you need or whatever, but they only last a few years. So you got to maintain them. If you want one in the basement, uh, depending on where you put it, uh, I think there's wiring already, wire mold uh, near, the, near the bathrooms there, where you could put one somewhere near that door probably to hardwire it. So uh, I guess the first thing we should decide does the trustees here want two, two pull boxes in the building? I mean, should we decide that rather than the, the fire chief saying one is one is all you need? And then from there, I guess we go back to the the fire alarm people that to get a price. I don't think we got a price for hardwire. My understanding was it was just remote, two remote locations. And I'm not sure they even came to look at the building to look at the locations other than gave us a price. Uh, if we go hardwire, talking to Mark, he's kind of saying, yeah, he could do do it, but he can't put it into the control box. You'd have to hire that alarm company to come and install it in the control box. Once you do hire them as a separate contract, plus Mark's contract to put the wiring in, you might as well just go with the, with the one company that's going to do it all. That's what his recommendation was. Uh, whether it's hardwire or remote to, to go with the control box company that, that would do it all. So I think maybe the, the first thing, you know, what do us trustees want? Do we want one or two? Well, in order to facilitate discussion, if someone would make a motion to decide the issue, decide whether, you know, move to install to hardwire and we'll kick it around. Anybody want to make that motion? Bob makes the motion. Is there a second? I second it. Okay, so the motion is to install two hardwired pull boxes, one upstairs and one downstairs. Am I quoting you correctly, Bob? Yes. Can I just, um, I yeah. did speak with JP and he said the hardwired one downstairs does need to be in the basement by that door because that is the exit out and that would be the door we would be going out of from the community room. So that would be where it would be have to be. So you'd pull it on your way out. Okay, so we have a, a motion in a second and we can have discussion. So the discussion is Cindy, that would not be near where the um, wiring for the bathrooms are, correct? R correct, it would have to be wired separately. I, well, there's the light switches there. So I don't know if they could somehow wire from the existing wiring that's there or I don't know. Can they go up a chase like that, Bob? That's you what know? I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to think. Is there a way to do wire molding around and then go through the wall into the bathroom? Well, yeah, because there there is there is wire moldy there, and even if you if you uh, went through the storage room, if you put it near that door that goes into the storage room, if you put the wire mold into the storage room and then figure out a way to go up up the floor to the control box, that that may exist already somewhere. I, I don't know without looking at it closely. Okay. So is I don't think you need to run no, new wire mold. All the way from that back door to the to the to the alarm control box. I, I don't think you need all new all new. That's my. Yep. Hold hold on. I I just want to I just want to confirm, um, what it is exactly that we're talking about. Uh, we are talking about. So, we're talking about two pull stations. One up by the front door, which right. can which can be hardwired and the same type of wire molding that's currently being used in the firebox. We're all, I think we're all okay with that one. But then the, the one in the basement, my understanding is it is going to be on the wall of the Duda room by that exit door going into the storage room. Yeah. So then you would, so then you would have to run from there and get from there up to the controller. Right. Um, so that's the question. It's not going, I don't know that you'd have to go through the storage room. I think you just need to go around or or some some process through the Duda room 
uh, unless there is no unless there's wire mold wire mold in a storage room to use. Unless there's unless there's a chase up to the second floor. Yeah. Right. So I, that I don't know, but okay. I just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. Yes. Um, did Mark give any indication as to the level of difficulty for doing that, Fred? No, not not really. Okay. And he, the only other thing he, he said, the cost is, I want to say it's reasonable to high. He, he said it. But you got. He says, "I guess you got to live with it because you need their control company there to install it right. to the box." So you're kind of stuck. He's kind of saying with, with with the price they're quoting you. He says it is high, uh, but he didn't know what else you could do. Is it possible to do one hardwired upstairs and one Bluetooth downstairs? Hmm. I would. I would be happy to. Put that forward. I need to reach out to JP anyway. I don't know. Okay. I would I would be happy to put that forward to him as an alternative, as a compromise. Okay. Well, would you therefore be willing to withdraw your motion and George withdraw the second, just so that I guess we'll just kick the can okay. a little farther down the road to to get an answer to that question? Because if that if 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 that would satisfy everyone, that seems like a um a pretty good pretty good solution mm -hmm. i don't know yeah so what how do you, you feel about that fred yeah i guess that, that that's an option and i i think we we'd have to get the the uh, control box company there to actually look at it and see what needs to be done uh, i my understanding is they're just telling us over the phone what it would roughly cost uh Mark, again, Mark is not interested. He says, go with that company and let yeah. them do it. Okay. Cindy, is um, it possible? Um, yep, go ahead, Bob. I'm sorry. What was I was just going to ask uh, if it's possible to contact that fire control company and um, have them come out and see if what we're proposing is doable. And then, of course, we need to, you're going to see JP anyway, right, Bob? So you can you can explain that we'd like to do a one-on-one -on -one if it's possible. Uh, yeah. One Bluetooth and one hardwired. Okay, I can, well, let's, get, let's get JP in on it first, and then we can call the company. I right? can I can do all that. I and then report back. Um, however, next month or however. Okay. But I can work with Cindy and and get the company out there and meet with them. And but I will talk to JP first. All right. So it's my understanding that the motion and the second have been withdrawn. So it's all good. Withdrawn. Okay. All right. So uh, does that satisfy everyone? I know we keep mm -hmm. doing pull boxes every month, but right. it's, uh, it's it's our white whale, apparently. OK. Um, <laughs> now we can do strategic plan update, Cindy. All right. So last week I met with Oscar, who has taken over for Christy Chadwick, who has left MLS, and he will be um, facilitating our community input session next Saturday. Um, he has all of the materials that he's going to bring with him. And he's sent me a folder to share with me for materials for right now. Um, I believe George, Deborah, and I have got the community survey tweaked enough that it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. So that we can put it on um, I can send a link and ask Jessica to put it on the town website. I can put it on the library page of the town website. We can have physical copies in the library. Um, it's not too late to email Joyce and ask her if we if we get it to because the deadline for scoop the next scoop is Sunday. Um, that how much additional like if she were to invoice us, could we send her the scoop? Could we send her, hang on, I'm talking in a minute. If we sent her the survey, could they put it in this upcoming scoop and just invoice us for whatever the additional cost would be for putting it in the scoop? It's mm, a good idea. Um, just Cindy um, and George, maybe you know the answer to this. I thought that Joyce and Nat were in Sweden right now. In Sweden, yeah. And and so somebody else is taking care of the scoop, but I'm not sure who. It might be Nancy Tulanian. She's done it in the past. 
or actually it might be Neil and um, okay. Donna. Donna. Okay. So I will send it to, I will get in touch with, um, I can email Donna and ask her if we were to send you on the survey, can we get it added to this scoop and please invoice us for whatever the cost is for having it in the scoop. Okay. Do we want it on colored paper so it sticks out? Do we want it on regular white paper? Might not be a bad idea to make it look different than the rest of the scoop. Like a nice spring color, like a yellow or pink or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I will put that. Thank you. Anything else about that? We're on track to be okay by October, right? We are on track to be okay by October. Um, Oscar is working with me on what I my deadlines are, are going to be so that I can get the information in a timely fashion to the board so they can do their part. Okay. All right. And we're moving on to the next thing, which is the acceptance of the resignation of our associate librarian. Yes. On Monday, April 22nd. 22nd, Allison came into work and the minute she said, I know this is the timing isn't good, I knew that meant she was leaving. Allison I um was offered and accepted a position as the library director for the Butterfield Library in Westminster, Vermont, which aligns with her ultimate career goals of being a director of a small town library. So her last day is going to be Saturday, May 18th. And I did forward her letter to the board in order for me to be able to post the position, even if it's just internally, the board needs to vote to approve her letter of resignation so that I can then post the position. Okay, is there anyone willing to make a motion to accept the resignation of Allison Bates? I'll right. make that motion. Okay, is there a second? Yes, there's a second. Is there any discussion of the resignation? It's just a loss. No. Yes, but I mean, we've gone through this many times before because the job is simply not that attractive. Yeah. Um. Okay. It's... Yeah, it is what it is and... I mean, I, I have been Monday or May 12th marks nine years that I've been at the library. And I started in that job because I wanted to, the bookstore I'd been working at for a decade was closing. I wanted to get back into libraries. I'm like, oh, Waitley, I will apply and see what happens. And here I am nine years later. Okay. All right, so if there's no further discussion, we'll uh, vote on the acceptance of the resignation. Fred? Yes. George? Yes. Bob? Deborah? Yes. Um, I read your lips, Bob, because your mic was off. And I vote yes. So the resignation is accepted. Thank now, Cindy, you. Cindy, can you just tell us, um, Cindy has not just been waiting for stuff to happen. She has taken action no. and she has Cindy a plan. Cindy had herself a good little cry on Monday night, and then she dusted off her bootstraps and picked herself up and came up with a plan. I've already talked with Carol Ryan. She's our substitute. Uh, she substitutes for us. She came in and filled in when I was out on my unexpected medical leave. Um, I've already talked with the town. She's already on payroll. She's already vetted. She's already considered a town employee. So Carol is coming in to substitute we can internally post the position. Once it's internally posted, Carol can apply to say, yes, I'm interested in having the position. She is interested in having the position. Oh, so that's the route we're going to go. And so she will, if knock on, and she's retired and she's not interested in, you know, she's just looking for a few hours a week to supplement her retirement and get out of the house and get a change of scenery. And I've gotten really positive feedback from staff from the times that she's been in there filling in. Okay. And so the, the plan would be as soon as as soon as the job posting has gone gone its X number of days, she'll write the letter, you'll um forward it to us, we'll vote on it in the June meeting, May, June, June meeting. June. And um and then she'll be on board. Yes. Sound like a plan? 
Yes. Okay. Good job, Cindy. I think that that's very helpful. That's Thank funny. you. And I'm very All proud right. of how I handled it. Yes. Okay. And um, uh, program plans in the near future update. Well, that Cindy did by giving you the calendar thing there. Okay. And the last new business item at this point is the front door issue. Bob, here we go. Um, I want to check with Cindy because I talked with Larry Ashman earlier today and asked him um, if he could give me a hand because that's a big heavy door for one person to schlep around. And this uh, isn't the first time that this is an ongoing issue every year when the weather gets warmer and the sun heart starts hitting the door, the door starts to swell, there's not enough wiggle room for it to so wiggle. Just, so okay. if it's totally shut tight and someone is from outside trying to push the automatic button to let themselves in, they can't get in. But if the door is shut, just so that maybe a little bit is there, um, a little bit shut, you push the door and it opens. And it works. Okay. And it works. Then then I will I um I will figure out a way to get there and get that the bot you said it's the bottom of the door in your opinion? It's the side, the whole side of whole the door. Side. Yes. The okay. two sides don't aren't flush together sometimes. Yep. Okay. Um because of swelling and then if it swells shut. Um, you can't get the door open from that. Use an automatic opener from the outside. From the outside. Okay. Um, I will work on that. Um, yeah, because when I when I talked to Larry, um, he said he used it the other day and got in without a problem. So I was hoping yeah. it was just that it was a a wet, hot day. But okay. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any other new business? Uh, I Fred? can't think of any. Fred, go ahead, and then Bob. Yeah, uh, I think the last the last meeting and even meeting before that, we were since we were looking at handicapped access to get people in and out of the building. Uh, I think we come down to having a wheelchair available for people that they needed to. We've got one out of the building. Uh, We've got one. We got one. Yeah, I I did look. Uh, I asked around the town hall, and they uh, asked around town, and we got one donated by uh, Jimmy the Greek's wife. Uh, I think it arrived. I don't know yesterday or today, and I I would suggest that maybe Bob, you you write a thank you letter to her from the, from the chair of the trustees for. Yeah. We're donating the wheelchair to the to the lot. To if the you lot. could just get me her information, because I don't even know her name. Okay, I I, I, just... I don't know. I have to look at the, at the, yeah. the town registry registered okay. residence book to see her name and address, but that's where it came from. So okay, very good, Bob. You had new business. Uh, yeah, the only other question I wanted to, the question I had I wanted to bring up to Cindy was, how are we doing on fuel oil? We got a full tank. I'm sorry, what? The tank's pretty well still full. Well, a week ago when I was in there, it was three quarters. And that it was two weeks. still be no, about three quarters. It's still about three quarters. Yep. That, that whole usage of oil was some sort of anomaly you went through a full tank in in four weeks. So, and I can back in back in February ish, and then so we were just concerned about it. So I'll just okay, I'll stop in. I'll I, I I have no idea how that happened because yeah, the thermostat exactly. was supposed was supposed to have been held at sixty eight. Right. So it may be that was one of the things that that Cindy and I talked with Chet from Kiris. He is going to replace the thermostat. Um, so that it's over 10 years old. He was having a hard time programming it. We wanted to make sure there wasn't something weird where it was turning on at an odd time and heating the building to 85 degrees or something. So uh, Cindy told him and, and I agreed, let's just replace the thermostat. Let's make sure we have the right equipment doing the right job um, and we'll just move forward. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is there any other new business? 
Okay, it looks by my count, June 12th is the second Wednesday of June. Is June 12th doable? I will not be able to be there. I'm I'm going to be away uh, most of the middle of the month. Okay. I can do that day. Well, as long as we had, as long as we have four, and is that, that's before the election? That's the day after the election, okay. according to okay, my so Technically speaking, we may, we may actually have another person, um, but she would have to be, or he, she or he would have to be sworn in. So I don't know if they can do that in one day. Um, but as long as four of us are there, we can conduct the meeting. Okay. So Fred, does the 12th yeah. look okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be okay. there. That's fine with me right now. Okay. Terrific. Well, George, you have a good time doing whatever you're doing, I hope, and Thank we'll you. miss you, but we'll welcome you back in July, I hope. Yes. Okay. Um, therefore, it's time for a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. And I'm assuming no one is opposed to adjourning. <laughs> have a lovely evening. <laughs>